wait, wait a second, wait a second. Can I go like personal tutor, personal tutor, personal tutor, imperial seal, tendrils? Welcome back, Vintage Gamers, to Monday Night Vintage Preliminary Event. Four rounds, competitive magic, everybody's favorite. Uh, what do I have for you here? I have some ideas. We had some ideas. I was talking with a very powerful wizard uh, recently. We were talking about the format. We are talking about how Jeskai's not very powerful, how, what could I do to improve PO, a bunch of things like that. And one of the things we talked about was, well aren't you just always tutoring for Tinker? And I was like, well, yeah, of course, we're always tutoring for Tinker. Tinker's broken. He's like, well, then why don't we play Personal Tutor? And I was like, well, Personal Tutor's a pretty bad card, but you do present a reasonable argument. We should probably play as many Tinkers as we can. So, <laughs> what I have for you here is an extremely all-in PO deck that is Turbo Tinker, per se. We are playing a uh, max number of personal tutors, which is a slow tutor at sorcery speed for a sorcery. Uh, this basically means put a tinker on the top of your library. Uh, and so we're, we're going to make our deck basically a doomsday deck, but a tinker deck. So bad doomsday. Hashtag all combo and vintage is just bad doomsday. Anyways, um, we're going to put it inside of a typical paradoxical outcome shell with our uh, three opal double top uh, all restricted mana base over here. Uh, though we are going to add Lotus Petal because we are going to play a very heavy game around Yogwill. If they counter our Tinker, our next best play is to personal tutor for a Yogwill and then cast Tinker. So we're going to do some tinkering, hopefully. Uh, we are going to be playing blue, straight blue black, no fluff, um, not a lot of answers. Uh, so we are going to play Tendrils. Tendrils actually gets a lot better in this deck because of personal tutor. So if we have a personal tutor on top of our library, with our bolus at Citadel, we can just put a Tendrils on top of our library, which makes Storm Killing quite easy. Um, no problems with uh, time in this PO deck. Uh, we are going to play a variety of other powerful black sorceries, uh, including Thoughtseize and Duress. Both of those can be found off Personal Tutor and will help push through our combo. Uh, I am playing an Imperial Seal, though I'm not exactly sure if the Imperial Seal is good enough, to be fair. Uh, just another tutor for Tinker, obviously. I'm playing only one Fluster because I do want to be able to find Fluster off of Merchant Scroll, but I don't want my Flusters to be like clogging up my deck. I do have Flusters in the board in case we play against Doomsday, uh, but we only have one Fluster in the main. I'm playing a bunch of Repeals as my ability or my spells that can get rid of a Hate Bear. Uh, this might not be good enough if we play against Mono White and we play against Thalia into Archon. I, I don't have enough removal to deal with that. Um, I chose to just say I'll just try to kill them on the play. Uh, because I don't really want to play things like Dress Down in my deck or Black re Removal Spells in my main, anything like that. We're trying to be very lean and mean here with uh, all the powerful restricted blue and black spells. Uh, I am playing a Seagate Restoration in uh, place of a land. Uh, this is nice because I can personal tutor for the Sorcery Speed Seagate Restoration, which is actually a land, so I can actually use this personal tutor as a land. Also kind of nice off of uh, Bulls of Citadel sometimes, and sometimes it's bad because it costs 7 mint life. And sometimes it pitches to Force of Will. So I think the one Seagate Restoration makes sense, but more than one is probably overdoing it. Uh, yeah, so we're just a, a crazy Turbo Storm Tinker deck with a lot of basics so that I can fetch Basic Island, cast Personal Tutor, and put a Tinker on top of my library and then be able to not get Wastelanded. Um, and then sideboard, I have a variety of things. So I have uh, Tabernacle... Needle, Jailer, Sphinx, and Defense Grids for the um, the Bizarre decks. I have some Force of Negations for the Crazy Combo decks, as long, along with uh, extra Fluster Storms. Uh, I am playing one Hercules Recall in case we ran up to a random Shops opponent. I did put in a Swamp that we can fetch off of our Deltas in case we need to play against a Wasteland deck, and I am playing one Death Mark and one Virtuous Ruin uh, to help in our mono white matchup, uh, death mark also kills collector roof. Uh, so it's kind of nice. And both, uh, the ruin and the death mark are both able to be personal tutored for. So that's the idea. That's the deck. And that's what we're going to try to do tonight. See how it goes. 
If you'd like to see your deck played on this channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below where you can find all the information you need to submit a donation deck list. Let's battle. Okay, welcome to round one of our Vintage Preliminary event. We're up against a Jolly Goblin, typically an Esper Saga player. What do I got? I have the unfortunate hand that only has one mana source. If we had a second mana source, we could personal tutor for Tinker and then turn to Tinker. Uh, as such that we don't, uh, I think this hand is just going to get put back for something a little more playable. Uh... So I can go pedal, top, and then I could thought seize. Or I can wait and do something like time walk or demonic. This is probably a more keepable hand. We're going to do a lot of like just jamming tonight. We're going to do a lot of like experimenting because this is uh, kind of, you know, fairly new take on the archetype. And there's obviously a lot of all in in this deck. I think this is going to be a keeper, and I'm just going to put away the card that we are farthest from uh, being able to utilize. Why is Pio in a Tinker deck? So when you play all of your Moxin, it is highly incentivizes you to play Paradox of Welcome. It is just like a broken card. You just go Mox, 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 Pio. I don't know why my opponent is pausing on a Lotus Petal. If they were to counter this, I would look at them very questionably. If this gets countered, like... What are you doing over there, opponent? <laughs> All right. And this lets us resolve our top. And I think I'm just going to pass the turn is my plan here. All right. So if my opponent is on Esper Saga, the things we really have to worry about are Negation, Force of Will, Flusterstorm. All right. They get to the probe and see my hand. I I, I, I would, uh, if, if it did happen, I would try to think of a very compelling reason. <laughs> <laughs> and I might have failed. <laughs> uh, I just don't know what our plan is going to be exactly, because we are pretty short on... I mean, we could just uh, time walk as a cantrip, try to give us extra time to draw spells. If we draw, like, a fetch land, then we have, like, thought season to time walk into Demonic Tinker, maybe. Something like that. So I, we have a lot of uh, possibility in our hand, um, and our opponent knows our hand, so we'll see. This looks like they'll probably try to leave open a Flusterstorm. If they had a mental misstep, they would snap counter this top at, at all points, yeah. Uh, this might be Ancestral. Okay, Ancestral. All right, land is my best one, probably. Opal's great. Is Opal's fantastic. All right, so what I'll do is I am going to go Opal, Thoughtseize, Time Walk, Demonic Tinker. Thoughtseize looks real good here. Uh, oh, yeah, they're dead. Oh, they got scammed by Slasher into playing the very, very unplayable deck. Sorry, opponent. All right, so... Uh, time walk. Uh, I can't crack this yet, actually. So I guess we spin. Mana Vault. Okay, that's, that's deterministic there. Not deterministic, but I mean basically deterministic. Uh, demonic. Tinker. Tinker. It won the showcase. I just don't think the deck is very good. I think the deck got pretty lucky. Like, when you put the cards like Tinker in your deck, you have the ability to get lucky. And that's what I think happened. That's my opinion, of course. People have different opinions. Ugh. I'm just going to shuffle this. All right, so now we just use our top to draw until we find tendrils, and then we tendrils our opponent. 
like it's a force of will tinker deck so like there is still some amount of inherent power in it i'm not saying it's like it's clearly not the worst deck but uh i think i have a deterministic imperial seal here yeah all right well, let's just imperial seal for tendrils Wee 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 I mean, the deck isn't um, horrible against us because it does play Force of Will, Flusterstorm, Lavinia. Those cards are all good against us. But I don't think the the putting I don't think putting initiative cards together with blue Tinker cards is actually a good combination. I think the best part of initiative is the fact that it goes really well with Archon of Ameria in the uh, initiative deck. So I actually think that the sum of the parts between the best cards in or you know, the, the cards in initiative and the cards in blue white Tinker. Um, sorry, the cards in Tinker and the cards in Initiative, like the best card, you're combining the decks, but I don't think they make each other better. I would rather you play like an all-in uh, you know, Tinker deck or a mono white deck, Initiative deck. I just don't think that the combination of the two makes the deck stronger. So now the question becomes, is my opponent playing an Initiative Tinker list that has four Archon of Ameria in the sideboard? Because Archon of Ameria is a problem. That card is very, very good. Um, and I think we need to respect it and play our removal spells. Besides that, I do think the duress is probably worse than just having the thought seize. And then I have to consider if we want to play extra fluster storms. I do think the time twister looks pretty bad here. Um, and maybe we can trim on like the imperial seal on the draw for a fluster storm. And maybe we can trim. Um, hmm. Maybe if we're bringing in these, we don't need as many of these. I don't know if that's actually a true statement. Let me go. I'd go find the most recent initiative tinker list, but I don't know when the last one was even posted. Okay. Oh, I, they might be on Dom's list. Dom's list looks a lot better. Dom's list is playing Hull Breachers, Cathar Commandos. Uh, it's not playing very many seasoned Dungeoneers. It's more closer to Blue White um, Saga than it is to Initiative. I do like this deck. If they're on this deck, they're not on Archon though, but they are on Hull Breacher. If they're on this Echo Baron list, they are on Sneaks, which I I strongly dislike. This list is got Archons in the sideboard. It's hard to say. We just don't know which list they're on. So let's go with this and try it. Yeah, my opponent was just pausing in the beginning of uh, that first game with the Lotus Petal because they didn't even have a force. So maybe playing multiple matches of Magic. Woo! Thank you, Jarvis. Hope you had a great stream. Hope you're doing well. We are playing a vintage uh, preliminary event tonight. We're playing kind of a uh, all-in Tinker deck. We're playing four personal tutors in our Paradoxal Outcome deck to try to maximize the number of Tinkers we cast. Uh, I have tried Mercurial Spell Dancer and Vintage. It is pretty powerful. I think it's definitely a card worth experimenting with. I don't think there's a, a cohesive list yet. That is super good, but um, uh, doubling restricted spells is easy and powerful. This is an interesting hand. I think this is a key... On the draw, one blue mana source, double force. We're pretty far from doing something, but not that far. Like, we're one personal tutor plus some mana. I think I'm interested in this hand. The good, nice thing about this deck uh, compared to Mono White is they don't run Cavern. So if my opponent just goes all in on a, you know, a bunch of mana in a, a three or four drop, then we can just force it. I really, truly believe the best part of Mono White Initiative is Cavern Archon. And I've tried to say that for a while. Ooh, Saga, interesting. They have Karn, maybe? No. So Saga on turn one here on the play might be fast enough to stop us, seeing as we don't have a very cohesive game plan. But if we hit, like, Mana Source into Time Walk into Tinker, it might not be good enough. Uh, so we did hit the Personal Tutor. Um, interesting. 
So we could do something like personal tutor for Seagate Wreckage and then probe into Seagate Wreckage and play it tapped. That will give us uh, a good start. But we could also just like hit mana off of our probe. <laughs> uh, the thing that personal tutor doesn't get is Ancestral Recall, which is a little unfortunate. I'm trying to weigh the 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 value of blind probe looking for mana or a uh, personal tutor for a land because personal tutor for a land gives us access to time walk next turn, but it, we're still pretty far away from we're not super far away from taker. Like so, if we drew a fetch land on our next turn, we would be able to time walk fetch uh, underground sea vamp for tinker tinker with force backup. Well, it's pretty bad if we, like, probe, don't hit a mana source, and then have to personal tutor for a Seagate Wreckage after. Like, it's possible we just never have the black mana to cast Vampiric Tutor in this game. Is it something that I'm com completely worried about? Yes, we we could, but I, I'm just not sure. Like hitting the land drop this turn allows us to hit a land drop next turn is what I'm trying to say. Personal tutor for ponder? No, because we won't be able to cast it. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna probe though. I think we also get imperfect information of their hand, which is pretty important. I could definitely see this being wrong, and we're just supposed to personal tutor first to hit our land drop. But the, the the odds aren't what I'm talking about. The odds are, uh, I'm just, ooh, they have force and fluster, but no blue source. Like this, is this hand keepable? Like this hand is banking that saga is really good, right? And I'm not convinced. So unfortunately, I can't personal tutor into a tinker right now. And island is definitely worse than fetch land or underground sea. But I am going to time walk and try to draw into some action. All we need to do is draw mana off our time walk and then for them to not draw blue mana. And then we can personal tutor for Tinker and with force backup and it's no problem. If we don't hit a land drop, what are we personal tutoring for? Not really sure. Like we do need to, oh, uh, they pitched, they forced this. Well, I can't really beat this fluster, so let's just force back. Yeah. They have so many bad draws in their deck, too. This is fine. All right, let's see. I just want to draw... I guess we won't be able to have force back up, but I don't think that matters. I just want to hit a mana source that we can use. That has got to be the worst draw. <laughs> uh... Shit. Okay, so do I even have a sorcery that I can pick up here that's actually good? I really don't, do I? Do I have to just pass? That means we're probably going to lose to Saga. Because that means the Saga will go off and they'll get blue mana and they'll be able to fluster storm us. Uh, I really needed this to be a fetch or this to be not what it is. So how do I... How do I progress? I can ponder, but it doesn't even look good. I can merchant scroll, but that takes an extra turn. And then I get flustered. I think I might actually have to just... Man, I don't have like a black land I can get off of the personal tutor. If I get a blue land, it's... I don't think there's anything here for me. Uh, I felt really confident about this game. Now I feel like we are pretty much going to lose. Hmm. See, they didn't draw anything here either, but they're just going to kill us with Saga tokens. Really just, we didn't win fast enough. All right, we hit the fetch. So we get to, so. No, we just get Flusterstormed though. So I have to thought seize. I have to thought seize the fluster storm. I'm just gonna take way too much damage, aren't I? 
If I thought to use the Fluster Storm, they get a Black Lotus or a Sapphire and cast Brainstorm. We vamp on our upkeep for... We didn't bring in Hercules, right? And we took out Repeal, or... We have one Repeal. We're going to take 5 damage, and then we're going to take 10 damage, or 11, or 12 damage. I'm just worried that this is not enough. I I can't imagine that they don't hit anything off of this brainstorm, but we're going to try to win with Tinker, but I'm just not sure that we're going to be able to resolve a Tinker or have enough life. All right, so I need to get rid of Flusterstorm because I can't beat Flusterstorm, and I'm just going to personal tutor for Tinker, and I'm going to hope that their brainstorm does not find them a counter spell. And I also am going to take, uh, like, five damage here. So, could be, could, be tricky, could be pretty tricky here. I wonder if they have a cage. That would be pretty bad as well. That would be game over. Yeah, I don't think they're going to cast Dig Through Time. I think they're just going to go Lotus Brainstorm. I don't know. I think we're kind of hands off in this game. If we had hit the Polluted Delta instead of the Thought Seize, I think we would be in a commanding position. Obviously, they did miss on their blue source, though, so. Yeah, I mean, like, what, what, I, I don't have, there's nothing I can do about it, really. We just, we whiffed on one draw that we couldn't whiff on. And we're on the draw, obviously, right? So. Was the probe correct? I think the probe, I mean, the probe hit a land drop. I can't even be mad about that. We are just like working with some cards that are a little less powerful to try to make our, to try to get us to cast Tinker more often. And it's still like a turn three Tinker, but unfortunately turn three Tinker in, in Vintage right now is a little slow. What about the time walk? Was the time walk correct? Could we have done something other than time walk? We could have cast personal tutor, but we wouldn't have three mana, right? So we could have cast personal tutor and then time walk to hit, try to hit a land. So that doesn't really change anything besides giving them another card. I highly suspect... Oh, okay. One construct. Sure. They're trying to find force because they know we have Tinker on top of our library. That makes sense. Oh, 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 no. No, no, no. We're just trying to put personal tutors in our deck so we can have draw more Tinkers. Uh, vintage Cube is fun. I kind of like Vintage Cubing in person. I don't particularly enjoy Vintage Cube on Magic Online as much. Just a personal preference. I think Cube is kind of a fun... Um, social activity. It doesn't exactly scratch the competitive itch. How do I do vintage cube in person with a vintage cube? Uh, you can print magic cards and put them in a cube. So, my opponent makes one mana, and then gets a Lotus, which gives them three, four, seven mana, and three cards in yard. Brainstorms down to six mana and four cards. Yeah, so they can cast Brainstorm and Dig Through Time this turn. There's, like, very little chance our Tinker is resolving, and then we just lose. Uh... But, like I said, I don't think there was a lot of things we could have done about it. I don't even... Like, I don't even think our opponent's hand was particularly powerful, but we needed to kill them on turn two, not on turn uh, three. That was the big problem. Uh... 
All right, so opponent is doing what we said. They're going to get the... I mean, if they have a Graph Digger's Gauge, that also wins, but they probably don't have a Graph Digger's Gauge. All right, Black Lotus. I would suspect Blue Crack, Brainstorm... They could technically miss, right? But they don't even have to hit blue card force. They could also hit blue land fluster. <laughs> so things are bad. I would like to see, like, they could also hit um, white land archon. So I just can't imagine they can whiff off of this brainstorm dig, but we'll see. I would love to have a force up, but I think my other options were too bad. Like, I didn't have to go Thoughtseize Personal Tutor. I could have gone Thoughtseize, Force, and then um, Vamped for Ancestral. I just thought that was a worse play. And coming back to it, maybe it wasn't a worse play. Like, if we go Thoughtseize their Flusterstorm... Or maybe we, yeah, for, Thoughts use their Flusterstorm, let the Brainstorm resolve, force the dig through time. Maybe. Maybe that was better. Yo, what's up, Ar Arkin? Thanks for the raid. Hope everyone's doing well over there. We're playing the Vintage Preliminary tonight, and we're playing a Personal Tutor Tinker deck. Um, I am kind of regretting my choice, though. I don't think I fully appreciated just how much mana they had to cast dig through time so here's the blue white land and this is oh season dungeoneer well i don't care about season dungeoneer at all so did they hit blue card force that's the question Eleven life to work with if they didn't. Seems passable. They did not hit blue card at force. Yes, this is what I mean by the initiative part is bad. It doesn't progress your game plan. All right, let's see how we do. Opal. Island. Uh oh. Uh oh. Lotus. That's a good one. Script. Top. All right, I think we win. Personal tutor. So I have... Uh, whatever, sure. I have deterministic here by just killing them with tendrils. All right, let's go. We were a little lucky to get this opponent, uh, this deck in the first round, but take any win we can get. This is by far the single best Citadel deck I've ever played. This deck is so, so good at using Citadel. Uh, it's like it is te 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 uh, technically built because for that we have minimum number of lands, tons of zero and one drops. Personal Tutor hits Tendrils and Tinker and Yogwill. Um, this is, you know, a land that's not spell. We have tops. We have minimal number of Fluster Storms. But you can always still draw lands, of course. <laughs> okay, here we go. Round two of our Vintage Prelim. We have a, a pairing here versus Hank. Hank's a really powerful uh, wizard who typically plays a mono white deck. Uh, Hank's version of Mono White, which is now pretty much the accepted version of Mono White, uh, typically runs Chancellor of the Annex, um, Archon of Emeria, Thalia. Uh, it's going to be quite hard for us on the draw, and unfortunately we did lose the die roll. Um, this is a matchup where if we're on the play, I think we're extremely favored, and if we're on the draw, I think uh, it's a lot harder. So my opponent's deck here is my opponent's deck. Thalia 4, Archon 4. Uh, Chancellor 4, until misstep, uh, Caverns, and then not much in the sideboard, but uh, 4 Archon is, is the kill, killer for sure. So, once they show up, we will battle versus Monoway, and 
I would I would like to think that if we're on the die roll, if we won the die roll, we would be a favored in the matchup. But it, because uh, typically decks like Jewel Shops um, uh, are are favored against Doomsday, uh, not against Doomsday, against Mono White. Uh, they typically can go underneath Mono White. Like, if you play a turn one or turn two combo and you force their fast mana, they can't deploy uh, their Archons or their Thalias. So. That's the idea. We'll have to see when our opponent returns. Okay, here we go now. We're, we've got Hank across the table, and I think our hand is just not good. We have double Opal, no other Moxin, nothing really powerful, no forces, so let's just mulligan. This hand has turn one Twister. Um, it has turn one Twister through a Chancellor, but gets kind of bodied by a lot of other stuff. I think this is still probably just to keep, though. Uh, I'm going to bottom the Seagate Restoration because I think that makes the most sense. This is a keep that we're not happy about, but we're going to keep and we're going to hope our opponent's hand isn't too brutal for us. So let's see what they have for us. If it's a Thalia, at least we have some agency, uh, Island, Pearl, Crypt, and then we have a bunch of mana at least. Um, anything my opponent does that is like turn one hate piece is really going to be hard for us to beat. I, I chose, I specifically chose not to play things like dress down, um, black removal, uh, and, and I can definitely get punished for that. Do they play Gitaxian probe? Is, are they trying a different deck tonight? I don't believe they play Gitaxian probe in their, in their mono white lists. So my opponent might be on a different deck tonight. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen them on a different deck, which is cool, though. They definitely have the ability to play other decks. They are just very known for being a, uh initiative gamer. So that's interesting. So they have full knowledge of what we plan to do. What we plan to do is just jam a Time Twister. Um, we get much more value than our opponent by hopefully playing a bunch more Moxin than them. Oh, maybe not. Oh, maybe not. And then we get to refill our hand and hopefully, you know, combo off. Oh, I absolutely agree. I definitely mulligan hard for a players who will play a typical deck. Um, not too many crazy tournaments in the future. Uh, I guess the next tournament is April 16th. There's a, a qualifier event. And then I'm I am going to be going to Italy for the next uh, four seasons, which will be pretty fun in June. All right, my opponent has complete agency here. I can F6. They know I don't have force. They are... Looks like they're on Doomsday, which is bad for the home team. Ah, oh, we're getting turn one killed by Doomsday? That's fun. This deck is just completely broken and has no business being in the format still, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Hank changing to the most powerful deck in the format is not a good sign for us normies. To be fair, it's like one and a half card combo because you do need a cantrip, but my opponent is like Dark Ritual, Doomsday. If they have any cantrip off of Blue uh, off of Lotus, they win the game because they can go... Um, so if they have like a Street Wraith or a Preordain, they can go Ancestral and then Sapphire, uh, Thassa's Oracle. So a very straightforward, easy turn one kill. If they don't have a cantrip, then things get a little bit interesting. As Time Twister doesn't kill them, because they have eight cards, right? No, yes. Time Twister doesn't kill them. Um, But yeah, I mean, so the Sapphire is not in the pile, so that means they probably... I guess they could still have Street Wraith Ancestral Oracle. No, okay, so we get a turn, but they could have Flusterstorm, so it's it's kind of brutal. Um, Time Twister does kill them, though, because they'll draw their whole... No, they'll draw seven cards, and then they'll draw for turn. So... I mean, we're still doing it, right? Like, there's still... There's, you know, we're, we're, we're making the play. It's our only play. If we do nothing, we just lose, so...
can't imagine this goes well for us because my oh they have force backup. So they had turn one doomsday with force backup. Okay, I mean, not much I can do about that. My opponent is playing the broken deck and had the broken hand. Good to know. Not worried. We kind of kept a pretty weak hand, so. Interesting. Yeah, if they hadn't probed me, they could have killed me on turn one. This is a true statement. All right, we are ready for Doomsday in the fact that I have two negations and two fluster storms in my sideboard. Um, we can take out Repeal. We can take out... Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I had, I mean, we don't know that they had force backup, though, Archon. They could have drawn force of will off of, um, off of their probe, right? They could have drawn Doomsday off of their probe, to be fair. We don't know what they drew off of Dooms, uh, off of probe. Uh, so they, maybe they didn't have a turn one kill and they drew into a turn one kill. I think we can probably get rid of one island here and play 10, 11 ish lands. I mean, we're just going to get murdered by four Flusterstorm, two negation in this matchup. Um... I mean, if their hand had Dark Ritual, Lotus, Probe, Force, you can keep that hand without Doomsday. Uh, I think I'm just going to get rid of the Imperial Seal. It's fine, I guess. I think I want to keep in Twister on the play. Just gives me more powerful keeps that I can just jam. Uh, so let's go look at the last Doomsday list, uh, just so I have a better idea. Uh, I'm going to look at the, either the max list or the 6 MP list. 6 MP got double top 8s with Doomsday last weekend. So 4 Flusterstorm, 4 Force of Will, 1 Force of Negation. I don't really agree with your assessment of what is and is not keeps and not uh in um in Doomsday, not me. I think you're off base, in my opinion. Yeah. Is this hand to keep? This hand doesn't really do a whole lot of anything. And it's pretty far from doing PO things, but it does have a force. I mean if you're also a fetch, it's pretty good. I can just go into demonic ancestral. I think like at some there's some amount of you have to keep hands in this deck that don't do anything. But at this one might just be too much of not doing anything. It's hard to mulligan a force seven card heap against Doomsday though. Like if you don't mulligan a force, how can you ever win? I mean if you don't have a force like and don't kill them on turn one, you basically are dead, right? Uh but there's a lot of bad draws here. Yeah, I just don't agree with that assessment, not me. I think that's that's wrong. Um, okay. I'm going to <laughs> Thanks for the raid. Welcome everybody. We're playing against Doomsday in this vintage prelim and we're trying to decide if we want to keep this seven card hand that doesn't do anything but has a force of will. I'm going to mulligan this hand and try to find something that's more powerful. Uh, this hand is better. It's better. I can't use this mystical because I don't have the mana to really use this mystical, but at least I can bottom this demonic tutor, cast Sapphire, uh, Ruby, time walk. I think I'm going to time walk and try to draw into action here. And then if I don't, I can maybe end of turn mystical or something. I think I'm gonna time walk. Uh, and I guess this lets me hold up fluster on the next turn, anyways. I can get mindbreak trapped here as well. Uh, I don't know if my opponent is on mindbreak traps, but
Okay, that's not a bad draw at all. So we actually are going to hold up Mystical Fluster Negation. I don't have protection for my Tinker with this, but uh, I could always go Mystical for Ancestral as well. So I think this hand's pretty reasonable now. Uh, watery Grave. Vintage. <laughs> Another Black Lotus hand. Okay, sure. Uh, doomsday, turn one Doomsday. The problem with letting it resolve is it doesn't really help us resolve our Tinker. So... This just seems like a fluster storm to me. Even if they fluster back, we're currently beating it, so. This looks like a, a fluster, end of turn, mystical, mystical for tinker or ancestral kind of line. I think my opponent has a fluster storm in their hand is the read I have. Uh, are they going to pay? Misstep force? They had a fluster storm, but I had all the mana. Interesting. All right, well, now this resolves. Um... I'm going to hope they don't have a cantrip to get into a force and then go for a Mystical Tinker. That's extremely aggressive. I don't think that's remotely necessary. I don't think I would take that line if I were them. Were we supposed to Mystical before Fluster? I don't think so, because this gives us the extra negation out. Uh, and I don't think I'm upset. I think I'm actually really okay, Karate, with them mis uh, meant, uh, misstepping and forcing. I think, like, I actually think this is probably the best possible outcome we could have had. <laughs> because this actually allows me to have a pretty high likelihood of going Mystical Tinker, right? They can have Days, or they can have, like, Blue Card Negation, but anything else doesn't seem like it's possible, right? And they can't uh, misstep my tutor, so I think this is fine for me. You know, what's up? No props. I mean, we are going to be blind tinkering, and we could get dazed, but I don't know. Whatever. My opponent could still have Street Wraith into Blue Card Force. And then have an ancestral underneath. So, like, there are still bad. Pro there are still things that could go very badly for us. Is there any consideration to ancestral target them? No. Typically, that is just not going to work. Um, sometimes it can work, but typically a an opponent will build a pile that doesn't lose to that. Will my opponent do that? They are not. They are new to the deck. Maybe they won't do that. But I would rather just go for Tinker win. I think. Uh, Doomsday plays anywhere between zero and two dazes. It's kind of a pilot uh, choice. Six MP plays zero dazes. Discover N plays one daze. No, Discover N's on zero dazes right now. I played like what one or two dazes in my last list. What about Max? I guess there are uh, Max has one daze. Uh, I thought Discover N had dazes in their deck. Oh, no, Discover Rain has one daze. Sorry, daze is further down on the list here. It's just 6MP who has no dazes. I like playing more dazes because I think that Doomsday is a turn one kill deck. They brought in so many fatal pushes. Holy moly. They have Thought Scour in their deck. Interesting. Treasure Cruise is in their deck. This is a very interesting build, actually. Uh, Shieldred. Yeah. I don't know if I would board in all of these cards. They might have a Street Wraith in their hand, though.
Can we really re realistically beat a Street Wraith? There's the Daze. So I think they don't have a Daze. Alright, I'm gonna go for Tinker. My opponent has to have Force Blue card, I think. Oh, uh, Time Twister also kills them? I, counting the forces doesn't matter. If they have a force, they beat me. There are two missing force of wills, so they might just have one in hand. Uh, no, they have seven cards, exactly, right? I think Time Twister is just better, because they draw down to zero and then they die. Oh, you're right. Doomsday's in the graveyard. True. All right, Tinker it is. All right, my, my opponent might have Force Blue card here, in which case they're going to Ancestral kill us on the next turn. But I, I'm not playing around it. If they had turn one kill with Force backup in both games, so be it. Ah, they had the Street Wraith and they chose to, to wait. Nice play. Nice play. Yeah, I mean, like, the deck is completely broken. There's just nothing I can do about it. My opponent's hands are turn one kill with force back up twice. <laughs> what am I going to do? Anyone who tells you Doomsday isn't a turn one, turn two combo deck is a liar. So, wait, they pitched Ancestral? I don't think that helps me, though. Uh, you're right, they did pitch Ancestral. Wait, why would they pitch Ancestral? That just means they made their pile wrong. Right? Because if you just put any blue cantrip on top... No, not any blue cantrip. Could they make a pile that lets them cantrip into a blue card? Yeah, you just put Ancestral underneath and you draw any blue card you force. Oh, I guess if they don't force something. Then you just naturally draw for turn and then Street Wraith though, right? Or they had Ancestral in their hand and they... Oh, their hand also had Ancestral Recall in addition to Black Lotus <laughs> Force Fluster. Okay, sure, fair. They must have Ancestral in their hand. Okay, um, I guess my best draw is a Mana or a Blue card. Uh, I think I need to negate their... No, so they're... Um... Hmm. So I, now I have to do a bunch of thinking now. <laughs> I don't think there's anything I can even get that's good. So I think we just hold negation up. It does look like they did. They put Lotus in their pile, so we could always negate Lotus, maybe. I think this wins actually, which is kind of crazy. I can't I can't think that my opponent made the correct pile. In this situation, if Discover N is playing, there's probably no chance I win. It it looks like a misbuilt pile to me. The only weakness of Doomsday is the pilot, so. And I'm not even saying Hank is bad. I'm just saying, like, you maybe misbuilt the pile there. I don't know if he missed all the pile there, because I'm also bad. <laughs> uh, Doomsday does not run Cavern and Vintage. Typically not necessary. Yeah, this is probably their first pro uh, event on Doomsday. And you all saw how my event on Doomsday went. <laughs> I played so badly. Good God. It was one of, one of the worst performances I've ever seen. <laughs> no, it's, it's realistic. Uh, I like to be realistic about it. Okay, uh, we're gonna... Hank says, I could have both... I could have played both and built the pile better. New to this deck, it's awesome. So, uh, Hank also believes there was a better pile there. To be fair, I really like that Doomsday lets you have a lot of... Uh, it gives you a lot of room for growth. Because the skill floor, uh, skill floor, I think, of Doomsday is actually kind of reasonably high now. But the skill ceiling of Doomsday is even higher. 
This hand's good. This hand's quite good. Hopefully my opponent won't have a Black Lotus hand again. All right. A fair game. All right. So we're going to go uh, Sapphire top. I could theoretically even not play top here. There's like some, there's like some reasons not to play top here. The biggest one is days. Uh, I would definitely not walk. I would definitely not walk. Uh, I would either play top or not play top. I think I am going to not fear, and I'm just going to play top. Uh oh oh whoa 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 whoa! Magic online, magic online, magic online. Hello? Uh, I don't know what that was about. I didn't see an opposition agent in my opponent's deck post. What is going on? Is anyone else lagging? I'm lagging. Uh, I My magic online is lagging like crazy. Is it my computer? It's not my computer. It's magic online. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, other people are saying it's lagging as well. Uh, hmm. I don't know what the best play is then. I guess we're going to try to play through it. Everybody is lagging. I think logging off would be a play mistake. Hmm. All right, I'm going to push through, I think. Uh, I don't want to fetch just in case they have like Black Lotus Opposition Agent. I I have lag I have definitely logged off before during lag and then not been able to get back on. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess I still could have got problem, but I have mental misstep for Dark Literal here. I guess. I'd like to just get this in play though. Hmm. All right, blue black time walk. I assume. If they time walk, am I jamming ancestral, targeting me? Kind of feels like I am. DT. So the problem here could be like Lotus Doomsday. I kind of want to ancestral myself, but I can only draw forces are the best draws. I'm pretty worried about Lotus Doomsday here and not having a lot of recourse for like Street Wraith into Gush and then I just this mental misstep never gets used. I'm gonna ancestral target myself. I did not draw force. Uh oh. All right, we got a turn though, so no problem here. So, Force is still our best draw. Academy is pretty good too. So, I'm going to time walk and then go for a Tinker kill, probably. Oh, I got to stop and think. Um, Let's think, let's think, let's think. I play Opal, I play Academy, I cast Time Walk, I cast. Ponder and personal tutor. I can personal tutor for Tinker or Duress or something. Alright, let's start playing some spells here. I think the answer is lead time walk. We also have a spin. What if we get Tinker this turn? We can get negated is the problem. Like, if I were to go personal tutor, tap, Tinker... 
I mean, what about what if we go? How much mana do I have? I have four mana. So I could technically tinker on this turn, and if they force it, I can untap Yogwill and tinker again. Right? One, two, three, four, five. Replay. I guess we technically have personal tutor for Tinker off of our Yogwill. So we can definitely lead to rest. So if we go personal tutor duress, ponder, so ponder, draw duress, play duress, untap, Yogwill, and like ancestral walk, or maybe personal tutor, ancestral tinker, or something. I think this is better. Do I want to ponder or do I want to just draw with, I think I want to ponder. Oh, probe as well. Is there any reason to probe first? I don't think so. This just looks winning to me. I might even have a tendril skill next turn. Negation. Holy shit. Negation's so good. So I just probe them so we know what they have. And then maybe we can still do like... Missed up the duress. I don't think misstepping the duress helps us that much. Because they'll just counter the Yogwill. Just gonna let this get negated. I'm gonna draw probe and then replay everything off of it. Uh, oh, they have nothing left. Okay, so they're just dead. Okay. Um. Uh, what is the deterministic line here? This is three. So I can go Yogwill, Personal Tutor, Probe, Tinker. Is that the best line? There might be a better line. Uh, I don't want to lose my top before I tinker, though, so... Yogg will... Fetch. I'm just going to go personal tutor tinker. That should be good enough. With a top in play and 14 life. There might be a more deterministic line than that, but I don't really care. <laughs> Alright, so I am now deterministic with Demonic for Lotus, Personal Tutor for Tendrils. This deck is sick.
Okay, round three. We got powerful wizard Karate Dom across the table. Uh, our hand is problematic because we have drawn the Citadel, which I highly recommend not doing because personal tutor does not get Black Lotus. Is this hand keepable outside of that? If this was a six card hand with no Citadel, I think I'd snap keep it. Um, I could like spin into a land and then personal tutor for Tinker and then and go for a Tinker. Um, Cardi Dom already hopped out of the stream. Don't worry about it. If, if it's if it's in the, if they're still addable, it's not a big deal. They're they already told me they hopped out. So I think I'm gonna mulligan this hand and look for something better. Uh, I do consider this better. I don't know how many slow tutors I want here. I think the answer is actually just keep the blue cards. All right, six card hand from Karate. We've got a Mana Crypt. Am I getting Mono Whited? That would be bad. Archon would kill me. <laughs> uh, yep. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That card doesn't do anything. All right, so if I find a Black Lotus, we have a Tinker, and they only have two cards in hand. Uh, okay. That is not a Tinker. Uh, lotuses? Any lotuses? Paradoxical outcome and land. <sighs> Maybe we can go for a PO kill this game. We still kind of have some issues, though. Blue mana is issues. So I could draw the delta, crack away the delta and or crack away the top and cast personal tutor for tinker i take five damage from seasoned dungeoneer and i can beat flusterstorm but i can't beat force uh i could also bounce my mana crypt with repeal i could just take P.O. I could... They could also have hard cast force. They could also go lost well instead to try to find a counter spell. Hmm. This is actually kind of difficult. I'm not really sure. The problem is if I take delta, I don't get P.O.'s because I can't cantrip into it. They could also have land trap as well. True. Or uh, another initiative creature plus trap as well. True. My gut instinct is to just go for the tinker. I guess I could also duress them. Is there any reason to maybe try to repeal here? I guess they could also technically be on Wastelands. Eh, I'm just going to go for Tinker and see if they could beat it. I'm not sure this is right, but this is my gut instinct telling me. Go for it. Alright, they went... Forge. I take five. They have hard cast. Uh, they have hard cast force up. All right. I can beat Fluster, but I can't beat Force. I think that's fine. I think I'm willing to flip it. I could technically bounce their Mana Crypt or something. Well, I know what's on my top. My top card is Tinker. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to do it. Nope, hard cast force. Oh, hard cast negation. Sure. 
Uh, that probably prohibits me from doing the winning. In fact, I actually am pretty much just dead to trap plus dungeoneer. Hmm, I'm not sure we're beating force no matter what. There are, are, yeah. I don't think we're ever really beating force there. All right, so what can I draw? Well, I don't have Tinker anymore, so I have to find a Tendril's Kill. Um, and I don't know how we're going to draw enough cards to do that. Feels like a start, but I don't have... Not much. Uh, they have a Hull Breacher, sure. Okay, uh, we are dead. Okay, so it looks like we're playing against the Initiative Taker deck, which we played against in round one, which I decided was a pretty reasonable matchup for us, though my opponent might be on the um, the Dom Harvey version, seeing as they had a main deck, Hull Breacher. Uh, it could be like their one season Dungeoneer. Um, that would be my assumption. Karate Dem is a pretty... Um, how do you say this? A pretty online individual. So let's go look at the, the the other Dom list. So three Lavinia, two Hull Breacher, one Season Dungeoneer, six Forces, three Fluster Storms. Uh, it's another seven Forces and three. Oh uh, wow, three Hull Breachers. Wow. Okay. So yeah, this list uh, I think is much stronger, especially against us. Has a lot more cards that are good against us in comparison to other lists. I wonder if this is even a defense grid matchup. It might be. This might just be a defense grid matchup. I think I still want counter magic, but... I think we just go... Boom. Superior seal. Down on repeals. Defense grids in. Uh, yeah, let's do this. I, I think if my opponent... I guess I do need to play the death mark at least for Lavinia. So I think on the play, I still want this twister, but I will just go down. No, I don't think they have Archon. I'm going to hedge on my bets and say they do not have Archon. I'm going to take out one personal tutor. Virtue's Ruin, I really want for the Archon deck. I think this deck is more like blue-white Tinker than it is... Um, than it is uh, Initiative. So I think my opponent is playing quite a bit different of a deck than our Round 1 opponent, even though they're both blue-white Initiative decks. Which is, which is fun and interesting. I'm just going to go uh, Mox, Merchant, Ancestral, and then next turn I have Ancestral Flusterstorm, and then hopefully we can build from there. Uh, if my opponent has, like, three mana Hull Breacher, though, it's obviously a huge issue. <laughs> Not much I can do about that at this point, though. I think I'm always keeping this hand. Okay, Saga, sure. And what? And Soul Ring, sure. No blue mana. Graph Digger's Cage. <laughs> I did not leave in the, uh... I didn't leave in an A repeal, did I? Okay, fair enough. I did not leave in a repeal. Okay, we're going to have to PO kill them with Storm, which is still doable. But it is annoying. I'm still going to do this on my turn because I think we're just trying to go. Uh, they can have negation, obviously. They don't have negation. Do I want to cast Ponder if I hit... Yeah, let's cast Ponder. Try to hit Moxon. Mana Crypt is the best one. Force. Yeah, I guess Force is fine as well. Unfortunately, I don't have the ability to hold up Flusterstorm, but... Next turn, we can brainstorm our lands away. I guess we might even want to fetch before lands, right? Oh, well, no, it'd be only one land. We put two lands back. So they now can have Flusterstorm, unfortunately. Um, 
think this is still just brainstorm put two lands back rather than fetch first. Obviously, if they have Hold Breacher, it's bad. Wow, that was the worst possible magic cards we could have drawn. I think we're going to lose this game horribly now. Wow. we The two unknowns that we drew were Land Citadel. And Citadel is a complete blank at this point, and Land is the worst card we could have drawn. Um... And I can't yog well because there's a cage. So like I have all dead cards in my hand besides PO Fluster. And I just needed to find Moxin. And I didn't see any Moxin. Uh looking a little doomed here. Looking a wee bit doomed. This cage was really nuts. I should have left an repeal for it. I didn't. I didn't even consider it. So. Play mistake on my end. I think, like, there's a lot of times where... I think they have a negation. Uh, there's, like, a lot of times where that Ancestral Ponder Brainstorm combination just lets me win the game immediately. Um, but uh, those draws were not it. So my opponent didn't have a, a negation backup, so I lost my PO, which is it's game. Not that PO was going to be good enough here anyways, so not a huge deal. That went really, really badly, that game. Um, I kind of just feel like the cards we drew were not the right cards. And this, this cage was so good. Yeah. I need to leave in one repeal for Cage. We drew really badly. I'm just trying to think if we could have played any better. I'm sure there was something. Maybe we'll just go back and look. Okay, YouTubers, we're just talking about the game right here. And we're talking about this position and like how often we think we can win from here. Um, obviously, we can't Yogg Will and we can't take our Citadel. So the only way we can really win from this point is PO comboing off and then casting Tendrils, which I don't think is unreasonable from this position. We just need to draw uh, Moxen, really, especially Blue Moxen. So something like Off-Color Moxen or Mana Crypt. Obviously, like Mana Crypt Opal is the best possible draw. Um, but something like Off-Color Moxen Opal is like pretty reasonable as well. Um, so that comes up to like the only real decision we made in this game, besides boarding badly, um, was this Ponder. I think is the only real decision we made in this game. Um, and I think that, in hindsight, this Ponder should have been a Shuffle. And the reason is because letting my opponent take another turn here just lets them open themselves up to uh, open myself up to getting fluster stormed. Obviously, we have a bunch of blue mana, so it's possible that we can get like a fluster back. Uh, I just don't think that's a good idea. It also opens ourselves up to getting hull breachered, uh, which is even worse because our only way of winning is PO combo. So I think from this position, what if we brainstormed first? If we had brainstormed first, we would have drawn these three cards, put back two lands, and fetched. And then we would have been able to pass the turn with Fluster up and Force, untap and brainstorm. Maybe that was better. Does it make sense? I think it makes sense to ponder here first, because we only have one card we want to pitch right now. Like, I don't want to get rid of land, opal, brainstorm. Oh, sorry, land, opal guess i think i still want fluster storm i don't know if my opponent has force or not from here i don't have a land drop this turn you're true that is true okay so that's why i didn't brainstorm then i was par i was pondering looking for a moxin so that i could pass the turn with opal fluster storm up Yeah, you're probably right. I'm probably just supposed to do the fetch. I consider, well, I can. I mean, I only am drawing one unknown, right? And I am going to just pitch two cards. So if I fetch, I draw one new card, but I don't have the ability to put any cards back. 
the problem with fetching the problem with fetching first here hashtag is it ruins my identity of PO comboing. So I don't think you can do that. Like I need to put dead cards back and then fetch them away and then PO. I can't like put dead cards back and then PO into my dead cards. So I don't really agree there. I do think I should have shuffled on this ponder though. That's the that's the thing I think that was the major mistake in this game. I'm not saying we would win this game if I if I shuffled this ponder, but I would think we have better chances. Did you uh karate, did you have a hold reacher here? No, I you, I cast uh oh you unless you held up flusterstorm instead of playing hold breacher into brainstorm. I guess that works out better for me if if you if you go for hold breacher, I force it. Pitching Flusterstorm. Yeah, I, I think the, the choice in this game that was the misplay is the ponder and not shuffling. Like this, drawing badly here. Like I do know I'm drawing one bad card because of the way I played this game, but I don't even think that was terrible. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think if I could be put in this position... every game in this matchup, I probably would take it. Maybe not. Maybe Ancestral's not that good. Maybe if I had a repeal in my deck. <laughs> okay. I think we made one decision in this game and it was wrong, so that's... that's fun. Or I guess we made two choices. We made the Brainstorm choice and the Ponder choice, and they were both... I mean, well, the, the Brainstorm choice was forced... In game one, let's go back and look at the game one. We were pretty happy to see this. Um, but is there a better way to play this position out? I can't think of a better way to play this position out. But if anyone in chat has any ideas from this spot... I'm all ears. Man. It's a hard spot. I just don't think POing for two with no blue mana is worth, like, losing my top. Kind of wish this Duress was a Chrome Box or a, another Opal or something. I don't know. I'm not really seeing anything from this position, though. I think the choice we made gets us our blue source and puts us a tinker, and it has, it, it's a tinker that beats Flusterstorm, uh, but loses to Hardcast Force. Which I don't think is, like, a great bet, but I don't think it's the worst bet either. Like, forcing my opponent to have a force on turn two, or they are in a bad spot, is probably worth Uh, I don't really think I had time to draw naturally twice. No. I'm really... If I had a Force of Will in my hand, then obviously a lot of things change. But even then, I expose myself to, like, Fluster if I do too much waiting. Yeah, like, the Season Engineer is a stupid fast clock, and if I lose, like, any Mana Crypt flips, it's pretty bad as well. Um, like, I'm, like, uh, obviously I, I hate under the Dungeoneer and the Initiative Creatures, but the Dungeoneer does, on turn one, represent an extremely fast clock, and that's not to be, um, that's not to be discounted, but the, but the idea is, like, if you're getting clocked on turn three or four by the Initiative, like, I feel like you should most of the time be doing something more powerful before then, right? Like, my deck should be winning on turn one and turn two. I, I would say turn two most of the time. So, like, the idea in my deck is hopefully we can win on turn two. 
Um, if our opening hand had a land, obviously, like, this is super good for us. We can, like, duress them and then and then do something. Or if our opening hand has a force, then everything gets better. Um, if it was an underground sea instead of a delta, does that make a difference? Yeah, probably. It probably makes a difference because then we can maybe draw to our POs. There might be something there. We could do something like draw underground sea, play underground sea. Um, we could, like... Uh, draw with our top and repeal our top and then replay top and spin top. Like, there's a bunch of other things you can do if it's an underground C. If it's C, you can just duress. I think just duressing is probably fine if you're going for a PO for three line. I'm not, uh, for, I guess it's PO for four line. I'm not 100% sure PO for four line is gr the best line because we don't have a blue Moxon, but it's definitely a good line, so... Lots of stuff here, but I think our, our cards just did not have the requisite power. And then here, we had like a couple slight missequencings. But again, our cards were not great. Drawing Ponder, Opal, Delta off of this Ancestral is not bad, to be fair. Like, Opal is one of the cards we want. And Ponder is not a dead card. Uh, but mostly the Ponder Brainstorms were where we bricked too hard. And like I said, I, I do think that this ponder was wrong, and I should have just shuffled this ponder. I think it was a bit of a misevaluation of how good Force of Will would be here. Okay, here we go. Fourth and final round. What do we got? Okay, this hand seems fine. Keep. Has some things going for it. It does have our weakest artifact pieces, but... We've got a Tinker, we've got a P.O., we've got Probe and Thoughtseize. I like it. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. All right. Okay. Got a win on turn one. All right. My thoughts he's not looking good. <laughs> so this is not that bad. All we need to do is draw a mana crypt or any moxin, right? And we can go personal tutor, tinker, probe. Not an opal. Not an opal, though. Uh, ah. We did not draw the requisite card. We were so close, too. Just needed a moxin. All right, so I can probe into something, then. I feel like I just have to do... Come on, man. There's like, there's 11 lands in my deck. Ah. Uh, it's so frustrating. Okay, I'm just gonna let my opponent play out until they show me what they are on. Whether it's Esper Tinker or um, Initiative Saga. Robe into time walk. Uh, I can think of a couple reasons. Uh, my mox opal is not turned on is the big one. <laughs> I am pretty sure all we needed to do was for the first card of the game, draw moxin, and then we would have been able to go personal tutor, tinker, probe, tinker them. Uh, but I, I did not hit that. Okay, so probably Esper Saga. That's a very unfortunate game. I must say. Like, if they had one less artifact mana, we would have been able to Thought Seize the other piece out of their hand. But, uh... <laughs> uh, should I have fetched a land before probing? Sure. Um, though... I could have drawn Academy. No, probably not. Ooh, three Cs.
I think we were beating a lot of hands with Thoughtseize there, but uh, deploy four mana of Moxon, Volt, and Key, no cards left in hand, was not something my hand was beating, unless I turn one killed them, which was possible. It was pretty likely, not pretty likely, but like it was reasonable, it was a reasonable thing that could have happened. Even Mana Vault and Soul Ring were alive because I could have gone land, Mana Vault, Soul Ring, Lotus Petal, Opal, use the Pearl, to, or sorry, the Opal to Personal Tutor, and then use the Petal to Tinker. I'm just, I just want to see more of my opponent's deck and have them present a threat here. I just want to see if they're on like blue black tinker. Okay, sure. Uh, okay. Um, I think it's negation or fluster storm from the play. Negations on the draw. Island out. One repeal out. Uh, might just be no time twisters against probable hole breachers. So I guess we'll play a negation. Try that. Uh, once I have to probe, there's like very few things that get me there. Like uh, maybe Mana Crypt, I guess. Pia. Okay, what do we got this time? I have a little bit too many slow tutors here. Oh, uh, is this a keep? If this opal was not an opal, then I could keep in PO. But I only have three mana to work with. I kind of think this is just a mulligan. I don't really like the idea of keeping this hand. Yeah, I'm gonna mulligan this hand. These duresses have been kind of awkward. I still think they're correct in the deck, but they've been awkward. Uh, this is too many fluster storms. Not enough action. Not great. Not great. All right. This is fine. Wait, no, it's not fine because I don't have enough mana. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep this hand, but uh, I think we're just going to go for the Ancestral. I can't go for a Tinker here. Like, I have to, if I had kept, if this was a six card hand, I could go bottom and seal. Uh, and then I could go land, Ruby, Mystical Tinker, Tinker with Force back up. But I guess I have to just go... Maybe I'm supposed to keep the Ruby and just go for Ancestral. It's pretty bad. All things considered, it's pretty bad. They kept a 7-card hand on the draw. Like, if my opponent just goes fetch land pass, and I can't really beat a Fluster very well. Okay. I'm very jealous of the amount of Moxin my opponents has had. I haven't had very many hands that have had a ton of Moxin. Alright, well, I don't think I have any counterplay, really. I think I just have to do my thing and hope everything works out for the best. My hands have just been kind of underwhelming. Hmm... I guess I can technically be a fluster by paying and forcing, but I just don't know if that's a winning line. I wish I had like a two mana card that won the game as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just have so little resources. I have to just go for ancestral and then waiting doesn't help me. So we're just jamming. Oh, they have fluster. I'm going to probably force it. Don't really see... Any chance for me if I wait any longer? Uh, 
Oh, all right. What do I got? Not great. Not great. Not bad, but not great. If our opponent just tinkers here, we lose. My opponent plays a key here, we lose. My opponent plays... Uh, lots of things. We do the losing. Saga is fine, because that's a couple turns. Can't really beat a Hull Breacher now. Can't probably beat a Shieldred. Can't beat a Negation. <laughs> Uh, things are bad. Tinker's good. But I can't cast it yet. Okay. Do we just ball hard and cast this brainstorm into something? I could theoretically wait and see if they have a hull breacher on end step. Gonna cast the brainstorm. Resolvers, we got resolvers. Okay. Um. So if I put back merchant scroll and yog, no. If I put back merchant scroll and opal, I can go fetch pedal tinker, and then if I hit a land drop, I can still yog will. That's probably best. I could technically put away my Delta and my scroll and go Tinker, but that's worse if I get countered. So I think I'm going to go this way. What if I get op Opposition Agent in? I can't beat Opposition Agent. I can't beat anything. If my opponent has anything, I can't beat it. Uh, I disagree, like, for all the reasons I just said, Bob. If my opponent does have a counterspell after this, I can rebuild with Yogwell. Obviously, I lose my land drop here, but I think this is better. Uh, resolvers? Just, my opponent's just relying on the Saga Time Vault? I guess I'll put Time Walk on the top of my library. How many personal tutors can I chain? Wait, wait a second, wait a second. Can I go like personal tutor, personal tutor, personal tutor, imperial seal, tendrils? Is that a thing I can do? Five, six, seven, eight. Is that not enough? Storm count five, storm count six, storm count seven, storm count eight. Cast nine copies. That's not enough, right? I uh, I can't throw in vamp because. Oh, I can. I can Imperial Seal for Vamp. Okay, so I can go personal, 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 Imperial Seal, Vamp. I mean, at that point, I could go Black Lotus Yogwill as well. I guess there's, like, no real reason not to do that, right? Oh, do we have enough life to do this? Yeah. <laughs> I have never done this ever in my life, and I am so happy. <laughs> I 
Ooh, you ever, you ever? <laughs> oh, that I, this is a screen capture moment if I've ever seen one. <laughs> uh... <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> That was not intended, but it is very, very awesome. <laughs> wow. That was, I just, I'm like sitting here in awe of, of that one. Oh, man. Oh, I'm, co I'm coming down from that high. <laughs> yeah, I should make that as the intro for the video for sure. That, oh, oh, true. Okay, okay, let's focus. Let's get the win. Uh, I still don't think this is a defense grid matchup, though I do want an additional negation on the draw. I don't think my opponent will have brought in Graft Digger's Cage this time, so I think I'm off of the Repeal life. Obviously, Repeal and Hercules like kind of answer like the Construct tokens or the Vault Key. I just don't know if I care. In fact, I really don't think I care. So I'm not gonna care. Let's do the submitting. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six with Force. Okay, cool. My turn to have a Black Lotus hand. Finally. <laughs> Uh-oh. They know all my secrets now. That's not good for me. But my opponent getting to look at my hand for free here is quite bad, I would say. I would not. I would not want that to happen again. If I could help it. Uh oh. Yeah, but they can counter something and then fluster. Uh oh. They're gonna are they gonna send are they gonna send too? Hard cast force. Uh, I mean I, I mean my my uh my my path has been paved for me. I have but one option. <laughs> this deck happens to have one option quite a lot, huh? All right. They haven't given up. All right, they know everything. All right, so we'll play around Spell Pierce with this one. And we'll play around Mind Break Trap with this one. And then do we pass? I think we play Jet. Because if they mind break trap Jet, it's fine. We just play Delta on the next turn. Now, do we pass? I would not Merchant Scroll here. No. I would either play for, fl Citadel with, Fluster, or with Force Backup, or I would pass. Upsides of passing include playing around my break trap, uh, having a land drop to give off of our citadel, uh, jam and don't fight, coward, coward I say. I'm gonna cast my spell. Ooh, they could have opposition agent. I guess I have force.
Maybe I'm just supposed to pass and fetch at a different time. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What was this? Mystical Tutor? Oh, that's a Resolver. They only have three cards in their hand now. What makes this version all in? We're playing Personal Tutor, which I would consider to be not a very good magic card. What is the downside of passing? Well, they get to draw an Ancestral Recall. That's a downside of passing. Oh, they do have the Opposition Agent. Do they have Force Backup? No. Ah, whatever, man. <laughs> All right, we we bricked. They have an ancestral. This is what happens when you play ten lands, chat. You draw them all off your bolus of citadel. I, I legitimately have like nine lands in my deck right now or something. I took one land out and I have a Seagate wreckage. <laughs> All right, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Citadel doesn't, never loses. We just need personal tutor, right? Oh, this is a personal tutor. I don't think we want to play into Flusterstorm though, right? We should try to play around Flusterstorm somehow. So let's think about this. Oh, that's a Flusterstorm. Mm, okay, does this resolve? I think this one should just be Time Walk. That just gives us a lot of leeway. Oh, Force. All right, I'm going to fetch away the Force. I'd like to get more spells past this turn if possible. All right, Ruby. Sure. We do have a bunch of Flusters left in our deck now. Uh, second Opal, sure. Uh, okay. Vamp. Uh, what do I want to vamp here? I guess I could go Yogg now. If I go Yogg now, I can go Mystical Tendrils. But then if they counter Tendrils, I, it's bad for me. So I think... Hmm. Maybe I just get the top. <laughs> Vampiric lets me get top, so should probably just do that. No, I'm trying to get a, a fluster storm before I um, before I cast tendrils. So here's my fluster storm. Maybe like two fluster storms before I cast tendrils. Hey, here's a fluster storm. All right, so now if I just personal tutor for tendrils. Or we'll be okay. Uh, all right, here we go. DT. Tendrils. Black, green, black. Tendrils. Get them. Wow, this deck is fun. This deck is quite enjoyable. All right, here's Flusterstorm. We gotta, we gotta. So I played around this correctly. Now I just need to try to play around this correctly. Okay. We're gonna really test my. My magic online skills. Uh, PO at least gives you more powerful draws. So it's possible PO isn't necessary, but I, I don't dislike it, PO. And it also is a blue card. You could theoretically replace like two POs with two repeals and like two dress downs or something, maybe. Uh, all right. So I'm going to target this Fluster Storm copy. And then I am going to target every other Fluster Storm copy. Okay. Uh, this is not big enough. 
Okay, so this, 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 same targets. I can't F6 because my opponent could have a mind break trap after all this. I need to make sure I can counter that. Uh, I don't think it's that hard with different versions or without different versions either, but. All right, tendrils. Let's go, GG's. Hell yeah! No, I, I'm I'm not saying Flusterstorm interface is good. It's not. It's not a good interface. This was cool though. This was sweet. I had a good time. This is an interesting line of thinking. I'm not a hundred percent sure that it's a good line of thinking. Because there is so much counter magic running around, but it is really an interesting idea. So this is a uh, Tinker Storm, I guess we'll call it. So the other way we could go is we could change we could change four POs, and we could play two repeals and maybe like two dress downs or something. I think you'd want to play at least one PO, though, for Merchant Scroll. So you could go, like, two repeals, one Merchant Scroll, or one PO, and one Dress Down. I just don't think that makes the deck better. I think having POs is good. Uh, what is the Knights... Uh, so the Seagate Restoration is a land drop that is also a blue spell for Force of Will, and also a sorcery that you can personal tutor for to personal tutor for a land drop. That is one of my favorite things that I put in the deck. <laughs> Uh, also, not terrible off Citadel, or sometimes very bad off Citadel, depending on uh, how much life you have. Uh, I just don't think Narsa is very good right now. Is there a sorcery payoff that's similar to PO? Uh, that's why I put Time Twister in the deck, to be honest. Um, you could play Mind's Desire, but I just don't think you would get to 6 mana very often. What are my thoughts on Saga? I think this deck is trying to be faster than Saga, and Saga does not tap for blue for Personal Tutor. So there's a re like I I I don't just like dismiss Saga every time I build a deck. I do think will Saga make this deck better. And in the case of this deck, I don't think that Saga contributes to its game plan of being a turn two tinker deck. My game plan with this deck deck is to be turn one island personal tutor for tinker turn two tinker you. I mean, I could play Volt Key. Like I, like there's not I'm not saying you can't build this deck with Sagas and Volt Key. Like, you can do that. I just am not convinced it makes your deck better. Defense Grid is for playing against Bizarre Baghdad decks that play tons of free counter magic and Force of Vigor. Uh, Necropotence and Bargain. I don't really think you need those cards. I think, like, Mind's Desire is kind of compelling because it's a, a sorcery you can get off a of personal tutor. Um, but I'm not really sure, like, you ever hold your mox in to do a Mind's Desire. Um, I mean, we can look. I look through all my sorceries, and I have most of the playable vintage sorceries. So if I take blue and black sorceries, um, like, we can look. I considered playing a thought cast so that I could maybe get a one-mana draw to. Uh, I considered various removal spells. I considered this thing, which I can't remember what it does. I think it's like a reverse Yogwill. Usually bad. I considered Dark Petition, which is not unreasonable, but it's also like a five-mana black card. Um, um, anything else I consider? I'm sure that, uh, <laughs> Sean would play Infernal Tutors or something, but I have no interest in playing Infernal Tutors in this deck. Uh, I guess you could get deep analysis if you wanted a four mana, like, sorcery that you could tutor for. I just don't think that's good. Um, yeah. Uh, not, nothing that I'm seeing that I missed, but, I mean, this is kind of new ground for me. Uh, in terms of deck building, so I, I'm sure there's some things. So, 
Um, thank you for all for watching. This was extremely, extremely fun to play. I'll probably stream it again at some point. Um, I will be streaming again Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern for uh, a Vintage League, and then Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern for the Vintage Challenge. Uh, thanks for watching. New videos come out Monday, Wednesday, Friday on my YouTube channel. I will see you then. Thank <laughs> you.